Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the one carbon metabolism pathway. So in this lesson we're going to talk about the role of both folic acid and tetrahydrofolate in this pathway and what the purpose of this pathway is. So to begin we start with folate. Now folate is also known as vitamin B9 and we get folate from our diet. So it's derived from dietary sources including green and leafy vegetables and also in fortified foods. Now fortified foods are when we artificially supplement foods with folic acid and folic acid is a synthetic form of folate so fortified foods include breads and other grains now folate is important because it is a precursor for the formation of tetrahydrofolate or THF so tetrahydrofolate or THF is very similar in structure to folate and the importance of tetrahydrofolate is that it is a carbon donator. And it also acts as a cofactor for many enzymes, which are involved in several processes such as nucleic acid synthesis and amino acid synthesis. We'll discuss these processes a little bit later. So, as we mentioned, dietary sources are where we get our folic acid or folate. So if we eat uh, grainy vegetables or if we eat a fortified food, we get folate. Now folate can be acted on by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase or DHFR to form dihydrofolate or DHF. Now this enzyme requires NADPH. So we take NADPH and we um, process it to NAD plus so it gets oxidized to NAD plus so we remove electrons and we get dihydrofolate. Now NADPH acts as a, an electron donor and NADPH comes from the um, pentose phosphate pathway so if you don't know what the pentose phosphate pathway is I suggest you check out my video on uh, the pentose phosphate pathway. So once we have dihydrofolate Dihydrofolate will again be acted on by the same enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase, to form tetrahydrofolate. Again, we use another NADPH in this uh, process. So again, NADPH is oxidized to NAD, uh, NADP+. And the um, importance of this enzyme with regards to cancer therapies is that methotrexate, an anti-cancer drug, actually acts as an inhibitor of the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. So that's very important to know. Now, once we have tetrahydrofolate, tetrahydrofolate can be acted on by an enzyme known as serine hydroxymethyltransferase to form N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So as its name suggests, serine hydroxymethyltransferase or SHMT, this enzyme actually utilizes a serine amino acid. So it actually donates uh, an, a hydroxy and a methyl group from serine to tetrahydrofolate to produce N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And in the process, serine actually becomes the amino acid glycine. And what's important about this enzyme, or what's, what is an important consideration about this enzyme is that it requires pyridoxal phosphate or a derivative of vitamin B6. Now, once we have N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, it can be acted on by the enzyme thymidylate synthase to recycle it back into dihydrofolate. And thymidylate synthase is a very important enzyme. This is one of the enzymes that I really want you guys to remember, thymidylate synthase. And what it does is it actually, um, the whole point of this enzyme is to um, really convert uh, DUMP to DTMP. So DUMP is deoxyuridine monophosphate. It converts deoxyuridine monophosphate to deoxythymidine monophosphate. And T DTMP is utilized for DNA synthesis. So that's why this enzyme is very important. And this enzyme also requires the cofactor FADH2, and in the process it oxidizes FADH2 to FAD. So again, thymidylate synthase is critically important in that it, one, recycles N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate to dihydrofolate, but its main purpose is to 
uh, produce deoxythymidine monophosphate or DTMP from the oxyuridine monophosphate or DUNP. So its main purpose is to form deoxythymidine monophosphate. And because it's critically important in DNA synthesis, it is a great target for anti-cancer treatments. One of those is 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU. So 5-FU or 5-fluorouracil inhibits thymidylate synthase. If the purpose of the cell is not to produce DTMP, N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate can be utilized for other processes. One of those is by its um, utilization by the enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase or MTHFR and it actually processes N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate to 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And this enzyme also uses NADPH as an electron donor and it also takes FAD and actually reduces it to FADH2. And this enzyme, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, is inhibited by a couple of different products of um, a couple of pathways. One is dihydrofolate, so dihydrofolate from this pathway can actually inhibit this enzyme. And another, uh, another product of a similar pathway that inhibits this enzyme is SAM, or S-adenosyl methionine. So we'll talk about where SAM actually comes from in a moment. Now, once we have 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, it can be recycled back into tetrahydrofolate when it's utilized in the enzymatic process of methionine synthase. Methionine synthase is one of the uh, enzymes in humans that requires vitamin B12 for its function. And its main purpose is, as its name suggests, methionine synthase. It produces methionine from homocysteine. So we've talked about this in a previous lesson before. We've talked about it in the methionine metabolism and activated methyl cycle, this process whereby homocysteine gets processed into methionine and 5-methyl uh, tetrahydrofolate gets recycled into tetrahydrofolate by methionine synthase. And where this um, is important is that it's part of the activated methyl cycle. So the next step in the activated methyl cycle is that we take methionine, we convert it to S-adenosylmethionine or SAM by the enzyme methionine adenosyl transferase and we eventually complete the cycle after a couple of different enzymatic steps, again forming homocysteine. So that's where we get S-adenosylmethionine or SAM. So this S-adenosylmethionine or SAM is what actually inhibits this enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. And SAM, uh, this product SAM is actually utilized for many different processes. It's utilized in catecholamine biosynthesis, it's utilized in melatonin synthesis, and many other processes. Now, if the cell does not require SAM and it does not require DTMP, this N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate can be utilized um, in another process and it can be utilized by the enzyme methylene tetrahydrofolate dehydrogenase to form N5N10 methanyl tetrahydrofolate. And in this process, this enzyme also utilizes NADPH as an electron donor, oxidizing NADPH to NADP+. And then this N5N10 methanyl tetrahydrofolate can then be acted on by the enzyme methanyl tetrahydrofolate cyclohydrolase to form N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate. This enzyme utilizes uh, a water molecule in its process as well. And the N10 formal tetrahydrofolate can then be utilized for purine synthesis. So this pathway can lead to many different outcomes. It can lead to many different products depending on what the cell needs. So it appears very complex, but if we think about it in a certain way, it becomes more simple. So if we think about this pathway as N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate as the hub of the pathway, we can start to make it more simple. So if we think about N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate as the hub of this signaling pathway, it can lead to four different outcomes. One is that N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate can be reprocessed back into tetrahydrofolate 
by the enzyme serine hydroxymethyltransferase. I didn't mention this before, but this reaction is a reversible reaction. So depending on whether we have enough serine or whether we have enough glycine, this reaction can be pushed either direction. So that is one product that N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate can produce. It can produce tetrahydrofolate. Another direction that this um, can go in, N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate can go in the direction of recycling back into dihydrofolate by the enzyme thiamidylate synthase to produce DTMP. So that's the second thing it can do. The third thing or the third um, direction that N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate can go in is that it can go toward the activated methyl cycle. So it can produce 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate by the enzyme methyl tetrahydrof or methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. This 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate can be utilized in the activated methyl cycle if the cell needs SAM. And the fourth direction that this pathway can go in is that it can go toward the production of N5N10-methanyl tetrahydrofolate, N10-formal uh, tetrahydrofolate, and eventually purine synthesis if the cell needs it. So again, it all depends on what the cell requires. If the cell requires N10-formal tetrahydrofolate, this pathway will go in this direction for purine synthesis. If it requires DTMP for other types of DNA synthesis, it can go in this direction. If it requires s methionine for catecholamine biosynthesis or some other pathway. It'll go toward activated methyl cycle processes. And if it just requires to be um, recycled back into tetrahydrofolate, it can also go back into a tetrahydrofolate process as well. And one last thing that I want to mention is that this portion of the pathway from tetrahydrofolate to N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate to 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate back to tetrahydrofolate. This is considered the folate cycle. So if we think about from folate all the way down to tetrahydrofolate and it's uh, recycled back to tetrahydrofolate, this is considered the folate cycle. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson on one carbon metabolism and the folate cycle along with its relationship to the activated methyl cycle. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.